Hey everyone, and welcome to this little lesson uh, where I do a master study of the fashion illustrator Renee Gruau. And I'm using um, a watercolor sketchbook. I really wanted to try this sketchbook out and see how I liked it. So I've got um, a set of pastel uh, watercolors here, and you are gonna see me wet the background and then start to apply that green tone. I actually get out one of my other uh, brands of watercolors and I'll list all of uh, the materials um, you know, down below so you guys will know what I'm using. But I started to just lay in this green color and decided to just go ahead and wet really all around the figure so that the uh, watercolor would go on really soft. And excuse my head being in the shot, it does get better as we go, so bear with me. Um, this is kind of a large sketchbook, uh, so I needed to pull the camera out a bit. Um, so I'm using my uh, brushes here to just gently, you know, lay down sort of that first layer of watercolor and just kind of establish that ground color. And I love Renee Grau's, um, or Renee Gru, I've heard it pronounced both ways, but um, his fashion illustrations are fantastic. They are so beautiful. I love how he simplifies the figure. Um, I love how he captures um, a lot of glamour and you know femininity in his illustrations. And I also really love the way he uses line. And you'll see me later on uh, mimicking his lines. Um, I, he uses uh, different line weights to establish you know the important curves of his figure, and I think it's a really beautiful effect. So I went ahead here and put the green into the dress because I can see from my reference image that um, he has got that green underlaying the dress. And for those of you wondering, I just kind of transferred my sketch into my um, sketchbook here. You can either you know go ahead and trace an image if you're not that comfortable drawing a figure, or go ahead and do some sketches and then transfer them onto your uh, watercolor paper. This just gives you a really clean line to work with. I'm going in here and starting to mix some colors for the skin tone and um, I'm starting out light you know as you guys know well, many of you know that watercolors always dry a lot lighter so I am not going in too heavy I kind of want to see where I land once this dries so I'm going ahead and adding that skin tone in And then I'm noticing that there's sort of a flesh tone also in the flowers themselves. So I'm using that same color and just, you know, adding it into the bouquet of flowers as well. I was a little intimidated to do this piece because this was a brand new sketchbook that I got. So this is the very first page uh, of the sketchbook and uh, you guys know how that can be. The first page of a beautiful sketchbook is a little scary. Um, but I just decided to go for it. Um, I'm doing the, some of the hair color here. You'll see me correct that color. It was way too pink and I needed to bring in some uh, yellow and some red to create a little bit more of that honey color of the hair. And really the importance here when you're doing a master study is, you know, not to put a lot of pressure on yourself to make a replica, but more about kind of looking at how this artist composed this piece and what are the components in it that interest you the most? Maybe something that they do differently than you do, and then trying to um, imitate that. And I think you can learn a lot by doing master studies in this way and kind of getting out of your own, um, you know, out of your own patterns and doing something a little bit different. So starting to lay in the dress now with just black. And this will get a lot darker. So this month, as uh, as my Studio Works members know, we are studying fashion, and so this is the inspiration for this little project. Um, I am definitely not a fashionista myself, but I really enjoyed kind of diving into fashion and learning about uh, some of the big uh, artists related to fashion illustration, like Renee. Um, and kind of exploring the boundaries or the lack thereof in fashion. I think that fashion can be very experimental and just like art, and it can be very bold and a little bit rebellious. And I think it's a great uh, takeaway for artists to kind of look at fashion and see um, 
what they can learn from it and what they can uh, glean from the different influences and the movements. You know, art, art is uh, in many ways a more permanent thing. Fashion changes on the regular. Um, and so it flows through lots of different uh, trends and influences very quickly. And uh, I think that can be really kind of exciting. It, it helps give us freedom to say that, you know, we don't have to do the same thing we always do. We can change things up. We can be bold and we can be wild and we can take chances and see what happens. And I think fashion is a really good example of how, um, of how that can be expressed. So I'm using my finer brush here. I started in, you know, putting in those little stems of the flowers coming out. Uh, start to add the little details of, you know, the flowers and the, the leaves that are kind of um, coming out of this bouquet. And even adding a little bit of that green back into that dress where I'm seeing it. It's really about observation and really looking at the piece that you're copying and um, paying attention to what is actually going on and not maybe doing what you typically would do. His lines, the way that Renee uses um, line work is really important. Um, he really establishes the gesture and the flow of his designs with line weight and light line work. Um, and I think this is something that is very inspiring. Um, and his ability to make something look effortless, even though we don't know maybe how many times he sketched this or painted this to get this design the way it is. I think it's really interesting to look at, um, you know, why he made these lines. And obviously it's to emphasize the beauty and grace of that curve of the shoulders, the neck, the back, um, coming to that point on the dress. I mean, it's a beautiful, uh, it's got a lot of grace to it. So I'm really trying to respect that line work and pay attention to it. Around the face, there's a little bit more, you know, delicate lines compared to the weight of the shoulders and back. Um, and so I was definitely aware of that as I was putting in these lines. This was an illustration that Renee actually did for Dior. Uh, I believe it was for one of their perfumes. Um, and it just has this lovely, you know, very French um, elegance to it. And I really like that about this piece. Of course, I also really enjoy that lovely soft um, yellow green. Uh, and I think here, what makes it so impactful is you have this very soft color this very soft form, but then you have this strong black dress. And I think that juxtaposition gives it drama and definitely that fashion vibe, that, um, that sort of glamour and that contrast. This is definitely a mixed media project. It started out with just watercolor, but you'll see me ending up uh, using some pastel and some paint. Um, and I'm, you know, mostly a mixed media artist. So when I need a certain effect, I might jump out of the medium I'm using and go to another one to get the results that I want. Um, and I think that's kind of fun. This is a wolf pencil here where I'm just adding in some lines that I'm seeing from my reference picture. Um, kind of hard to see in the camera, but if you look at this illustration, um, you do see some line work. So as things dry, obviously they're a little bit too light. I've got to go back in and intensify color. Um, and that's pretty common with watercolors. As many of you know, I'm definitely not a watercolor artist, but um, you know, that's just some of the properties of the watercolor that you have to kind of roll with. And I'm okay with that actually, building up the color was, was quite a nice process. I 
I feel like Renee gives just enough detail to communicate what he's trying to communicate. Um, and I love that about, he doesn't overwork the different elements in his illustrations. They're very, um, they're very succinct. They're not overdone. Um, and I think there's a power in that and recognizing when to stop working on something and when to leave things simple um, and to know where things need definition. Um, and I think that's something I was definitely learning from this artist for sure. So here you see me using white acrylic paint. Uh, that's just titanium white, uh, golden heavy body paint. And I am just starting to build up that white, uh, the white of the flowers. Um, and I just found that it was just easier for me. I could have left the white of the paper. A watercolor artist would have just left the white of the paper, um, which is another great way to do it. But for me, I just grabbed my white paint and I was able to build up a little bit more texture and opacity that I really wanted to capture here. Um, you could use white gouache as well, it would work really well. And Renee had like literally, I think thousands of illustrations. So if you look him up on Pinterest or on Google, um, you will see that he did amazing, amazing works. Um, you know, everything from ink sketches to full paintings and they all have this wonderful energy to them. Um, he definitely influenced many artists and, and fashion designers of the time as well. So he was very influenced himself by Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, and you can definitely see that in his work if you go ahead and have a look um, at some more of his pieces. So here you see me grabbing my pan pastels, which is one of my favorite products to use. Um, and I'll list the color that I used as well. But um, I'm going in and I'm just kind of further defining, I want that color to be a little bit more intense. I could have gone in and done the watercolor, um, but I didn't want to activate any of the black watercolor I already had down. I didn't want to risk any bleeding. So I just went ahead and grabbed my pan pastel and uh, started to kind of delineate the flowers, create a little more contrast between the flowers and that background of the green. Um, and I moved to I moved from the little you know um, applicator to the bigger sponges. And these are the soft tools that are made specifically for pan pastel. They work really great. Um, and I'm mixing with a little bit of a, a grayed down like a tint of that same green um, to create a little bit more of that same color that I'm seeing in my reference image. Um, and that worked really well, actually. It was easy to deepen the color and I didn't have to disturb any of the work I'd already done. So for me, it was a good solution. Um, so once you know your mediums, you know what they're gonna do for you. And I think that's what's so fun about being a mixed media artist is you can grab uh, the medium that is going to give you what you want once you understand the way they, diff they, the way they work together and uh, on their own as well. So that to me is giving a little bit more contrast to those flowers, which I enjoy. And I'm going in with some pastel pencils. You could use uh, watercolor pencils, you could use color pencils, you could use stick pastels to go ahead and do this. Even marker um, could work. So definitely use the materials that you like to use when you're doing this study. Um, you definitely don't have to use the same stuff I did. Uh, I think what's more important is to consider doing master studies if you have not already. Um, I think we have this amazing legacy of artists in history and I feel like they are there to help support us on our journey and to help um, teach us things even though they're long gone by connecting with them through a little bit of study, a little self-study or by taking a class or um, just creating a little, you know, projects like this, you can learn a little bit more about an artist that has passed and has so much to offer.
And again, it's not about getting it exactly right. We are not, you know, creating a replica. We are creating a study. And I think it's really important to remind yourself of that because we can get that inner critic going and uh, it can be a little harsh. So I wanted to deepen the skin tone a little bit here. So I'm using that kind of yellow ochre color in this, this pastel set. And I will, I will list the information of this set. Um, it's a great little set. I would say the saturation of the colors is not you know, super powerful, but you can build up the color and the colors are quite lovely. Um, so I have enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and those are my favorite watercolor um, brushes. I think they're by Princeton. I think they're the Princeton Neptune. Um, so those are great too. Uh, this is probably my third pass on the black, uh, just with black uh, watercolor. I really wanted it to be intense and rich the way that Renee's is. So went back in again and went over, went over that. And then this is actually a ink pen. Um, it's a Japanese ink pen. It's got a brush tip. And I really wanted to go back in and, and again, work those lines and really give them the attention that they deserve. So going from very, very thin to a little bit thick and trying to really uh, replicate sort of his line work. I, I feel like that's one of his biggest gifts to us is not only his compositions and his the way he simplifies form but his line work is incredible so definitely check out more of his work to see examples of that it almost feels calligraphic the way that he uses um the way he uses line especially with the woman's form it's just very beautiful and poetic to me And if you guys don't resonate with this image, like I said, he's got thousands, hundreds that you can find online. Um, and maybe you, you're gonna resonate with another piece of his that feels uh, more connected to your style. Uh, for me, you know, if you know my work, I love soft feminine looks. So for me, this, this example or this piece really resonated with me, but definitely go with what resonates with you. Um, I'm using a little bit more of that grayed down green to kind of go over the top and just create a little bit of the striation that I'm seeing um, from the original piece. There's kind of a, a little bit of a stripey look and I'm just trying to emulate that a little bit. And going back in and just detailing some of the little flower elements. I think he was definitely a master at calling attention to what was most important. And again, he did that with line, he did it with design. You know, he could have really gotten super detailed with those flowers, but the flowers are not the focal point, it's the woman, right? If he had gone too detailed with the flowers, it would be actually a distraction from her silhouette. And so it's making those decisions um, that really can make a piece feel very polished and very professional. Uh, when there's intention behind these decisions that the artist makes. So it's interesting to kind of wonder like, oh, that might be why he did that. And to kind of ask yourself the questions when you're doing your own work about where you want, you know, your viewer to look and what is the most important element that you're trying to express. Um, so those are really great questions to pose as you, as you do your own process. So yeah, going back in here with a little bit of actually just the watercolor mixed with the white uh, acrylic, and I'm just adding in a little bit more definition into the hair. I really wanted the hair to feel uh, glowy and soft like his did, um, and just took a little bit of, of working out the right tones and getting the right luminosity. I only used about three brushes, um, maybe four, in this process, going from a very thin one, like the one I'm using right there, and to a thicker watercolor brush, and then a medium one. 
and then I used a flat brush for the wash just to get the water onto the paper. This paper is like a handmade watercolor paper. It isn't by any major brand. I got it from a boutique actually. It's a big, beautiful handmade watercolor journal. Um, so I can't speak to the actual like brand of paper because I believe it's handmade paper. Um, but any mixed media or watercolor paper would work really well for this process. Just going back in and creating a little bit more opacity on her skin tone. And I just really had a good time doing this, you guys. It was really relaxing. Um, and I hope you give it a go. Oh, here I'm grabbing, I grabbed a little bit of that peach tone with my Pan Pastel and just went in and added there's sort of a peach flesh toned little bit of a shading that he did in the flowers, which is actually really beautiful and ties to the skin tone and brings a little bit of warmth into those flowers. Um, so I'm just adding that in and then using my wolf pencil, just adding in a few details with the, the, some line work. But yeah, I hope you guys give this a go. Um, get your fashion designer hats on and have some fun with it. Um, and if Renee doesn't um, resonate with you, then have a look online and see about another master artist that you might want to create a study from because I think there is a lot to learn from these amazing artists. So thanks so much for joining me guys and I'll see you next time.